0.15 microwatts times seconds. So the last tooth we checked out, it looked a little better, but still there was voltage was high and the energy was a little higher than it should be. So what you do is take the readings and add, add the millivolts up and you come up with 400. You're almost up to a half a volt in that system. Can be responsible for many, many health problems. It's totally overlooked. I call them hidden problems. The microamps, as you can see here, they vary. But for every microamp, and I don't tell this to the patient, it's uh, three times 10 to the 12 power ions per second are coming off of that filling. It doesn't mean a thing to the patient. So what I tell them is there's a certain number of metal particles that are coming off of that filling per second. That's enough. They don't have to know more than that. But you're telling them what's happening. With the metal particles coming off of the filling, it's also taking calcium ions off of the enamel with it. And that's one of the reasons that we have open margins or we have decay, decalcification down between the teeth. The plaque doesn't help because that acidifies everything. This is a, uh, an example of what we see quite often. This is a mercury filling here. It's a composite filling that was taken out and under there the dentist who did it previously left the mercury in there. So sometimes good if you're in the dental chair have a mirror and have him show you what he's doing and if he doesn't want to then you better find a different dentist this is a stainless steel a nickel beryllium or nickel gallium and i was talking to one of the ladies in the uh, in the exhibit room and we were measuring her and I couldn't get things to balance, and I asked her, do you have an underwire in your bra? This contains a nickel beryllium or a nickel gallium. It's can nickel is cancer producing. If you look it up on the internet uh, under metal toxicology, and you'll see its description is under cancer. So we took the stainless steel crown off, and what do we find? But a very large mercury filling. So that gives you a bimetal current, two different metals give you the bad energy effect. And of course, what do those two teeth affect? Large intestine and lung. There's where it's imperative, I feel, every health practitioner here should have a tooth energy chart and know what it is. Now the way I learned it, every patient that came in when I'd work on a tooth I'd look up at the chart and I'd say, now see, this tooth, tooth affects large intestine and lung. This tooth affects stomach, spleen, and pancreas. And that's how I learned it, you know, repetition. This is a, a crown on this tooth. What I do, I take a diamond drill and I cut across the metal, or the, the porcelain to expose the metal. Then I cut through the metal and take the crown off, and under the crown, what do we find? Another mercury filling, given a bimetal current. Whenever you use metals in any filling replacement, it's toxic to the patient. Mechanically, yes, they work really good, but health-wise, not good. All right, we're into our, <clears throat> with our toothbrush. Everybody here has one. And if you'd like to take it out of the little package. The first thing I have the patients do is feel the brush. It's very soft. It's like a baby hairbrush. This is what you want to use at the gum line and the free margin of the gum around the tooth. This brush then is placed there 
at about a 45 degree angle and see how the bristles separate. If you have a harder brush, it won't do that. And the bristles are designed to be used dry, not with a toothpaste or baking soda or anything else. And they're pressed into the gum. I recommend 10 times press. And then you can either sip the brush dry or you can rinse it and snap it dry on the sink. That's as dry as it has to be. Then go back again. This is a very important uh, phase here. You can see the bristles parting here. This is a very difficult area to clean, a common place where we see denuded epithelium, where the, the gum tissue has been eaten off by the bacteria. And if you look carefully, you'll see a little red line right in between each one of these teeth where the gum is aggravated. This is a step that I really like here in using the heel of the brush to brush the lower front teeth. Works great. Pressing 10 times. This is another way to hold your brush. Hold it in a vertical fashion, brushing up and down. This way, Gary, this way, up and down. Okay, but use a mirror. I recommend my patients use a mirror and uh, see what they're doing. But so many people have done it the other way that they uh, just kind of look down in the sink and scrub. This is the company where we get our, our brushes from. And this just describes the different type brushes. This you may want to write down their 800 number where you can order the brushes. Just 800-553-1440. And if you have any problem, you can contact me on my email. I can give you my email. It's uh, D-L-C-O-O-K-S-1 at yahoo.com. But patients really appreciate when you show them these simple things. This is a dental floss. This is put out by the ADA, the American Dental Association. Uh, if you look here, you'll see why. Here's their amalgam fillings that they think are okay. So this is quite an old picture, but it tells what I want the patient to see where we very carefully saw the, the dental floss between the teeth, not slam it through and cause damage to the gum tissue. The key is to get under the gum. You see how far that dental floss has gone under the gum? A lot of people only dental floss through the contact. They think that's the problem area. It's under the free margin of the gum that you want to be cleaning. And Use the dental floss up and down, up and down like this, and then pull the dental floss out from between the teeth, not go back through the contact area. That's one way of holding your dental floss that you can figure out by yourself. Again, you're slipping it up through the, through the teeth, going up under the gum. This is a little better picture of what I don't want my patients to do. It'll make a dramatic difference. <coughs> and very important to dental floss every day. And if you don't eat that day, you don't have to dental floss, okay? Very important, the uh, dental flossing back of the last tooth a lot of people think because they don't have a tooth behind that, they don't have dental floss there. But this is a very, very important spot. It accumulates a lot of bacteria and your major amount of decay.